This is Twit. All right, so there's drama. There is drama in the Apple world. I know you're shocked. You're probably a little <laughs> bit concerned. This drama, though, is 5G modem drama. We already know that <laughs> Apple is embroiled in a patent legal uh, fly, all sorts of things fight with Qualcomm. Qualcomm says they owe the money. Apple says we don't. Qualcomm says we owe this technology. Apple says they don't. But the point is that Qualcomm does not seem eager to supply Apple with 5G chipsets. And that's okay because Apple's been BFFs with Intel ever since Intel bought Infineon, the original maker of iPhone modems, and has tried to crawl their way out of the very slow in, uh a CPU um, roadmap into a thriving modem business. But there was rumors that Intel may not be ready to have those modems available to Apple in time for never mind this year's launch, but next year's <laughs> launch, maybe the year after that's launch. I don't know how far out we can go with it, but just they may not be ready. Now, there's a couple things to parse here. One, Apple wasn't exactly early to 3G. The first iPhone didn't have it. They weren't early to LTE. I think there was like a year, year and a half between the HTC Thunderbolt, which was the first Verizon LTE phone, and the iPhone 5, which was Apple's first uh, Verizon LTE phone. But then also we had Intel come pushing back saying, no, nope, we are on, they wouldn't mention Apple, but they're like, nope, we are on schedule. We're going to deliver our modems to our many, many, many customers, not saying Apple, many customers <laughs> on time and on schedule. And then we also had Huawei seemingly out of nowhere, uh, maybe out of nowhere, who knows, saying, hey, we've never shared our 5G modem technology with anybody, but we'd maybe consider sharing it with Apple. Who are you going to ban in the US now, huh, government? <laughs> uh, and the whole thing is sort of, it bubbled up with a lot of real angry, real happy, real concerned, real feisty hot takes. Andy, is this is this just part of the fun of launching a new wireless standard in the world these days? Uh, well, it's uh, if I'm not, in, since I'm not invested in Intel or uh, or Apple, it's fun to watch because <laughs> you really, I mean, th th this is this goes so much worse than Apple versus Samsung. Because they they recovered from that, and it really was the the animosity was pretty much Steve Jobs versus Samsung. He took it personally uh, with they Samsung. Let's say finding uh, inspiration and homaging <laughs> the iPhone uh, in its early Samsung Galaxy phones. With this one, every time you get a news new news report, and every time you talk to somebody who is familiar with the situation, you get two tough. Uh, angry middle-aged people <laughs> sitting down at a conference table by a third party who's say, let's solve this problem. And it ends 12 minutes later with both of them saying, I'll see you in hell before we solve this problem. <laughs> Where they, I, I seriously think that Apple is willing to cut off its own nose if it if it would uh, not give uh, give an advantage or, or or a pleasant situation for uh, for for Qualcomm. And this is a problem because. Qualcomm, for all of its uh, creative uh, licensing <laughs> ideas, uh, they are really the superstars when it comes to phone modems. They uh, they will give you one chip that solves all your problems worldwide. You will not have a problem with connectivity as related uh, to your modem chip. And if Apple doesn't want to do business with them or vice versa, they have to go with definitely the B team, which is definitely Intel. They don't have the experience. They don't have the manufacturing capacity. And frankly, they don't, uh, they have a certain amount of pride in and of themselves where word from inside Intel is that, my God, Apple is a really high maintenance date. They will, they, we're, we are spending <laughs> so much of our time trying to keep this one client happy, whereas we have other clients in other parts of our business where we are more interactive with, we are more, uh, we, we, we have the capability of designing a hardware reference platform and then finding manufacturers uh, who want to actually work with us to develop this platform. Why are we always flying to Cupertino to get slapped around by Apple? Uh, but the good, the really good news is that 5G is not going to be like rolling out LTE or, uh, or 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 fourth or third generation cell phone, cell phone networks. Uh, this is such a, such a transformation on what's gone before that uh, none of the old rules apply. It's not as though they can uh, the uh, carrier companies can do an update a firmware update to their cell towers or just hang other antennas on the towers they've got. They really are, are going to have to deploy new hotspots everywhere. Uh, it is not even slightly realistic that they're going to be able to put 5G all the way across the country, let alone the world. And frankly. 
they're going to have trouble selling this to consumers uh, because right now LTE is really good. It's mature. It's fast. Uh, people who create these services have figured out how to pump out HD video on a phone uh, through an LTE connection. So how are you going to sell a consumer on upgrading your hardware and possibly signing up for a more expensive 5G plan for a new network that doesn't initially give them any new features and isn't even going to work in the majority of the company uh, country. So Apple can certainly sit back for a year or two before introducing a 5G phone because certainly for the first couple of years, all the news about uh, Samsung's first to market 5G phone is going to be why is Samsung's 5G first to market phone never getting a 5G signal, even when I'm st standing in the Verizon store directly <laughs> next to what is they are promising is a demo antenna. Uh, there, there was a really good article in uh, CNET, I think it was, uh, where um, I think Verizon uh, had sort of a one day demo where they brought some journalists and they gave them uh, f their a current 5G hardware, which I think was a Moto uh, phone, the kind that you can actually put accessory backs on it. So it has a 5G modem accessory back on it. And that is, it was Chicago is one of the two cities where the Verizon says that they are qualified to say that we are the first to actually put real 5G in the, in the United States. And just said, go 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 for the go around Chicago for the day. Use it for real. Uh, of course, they've got uh, PR people on speed dial. But the story, I think, the, the headline was it actually brought me to tears trying to get this thing to work. And one of the stories is that. Again, at this Verizon store, they set up a 5G antenna like right there with the intention of directing uh, press people with hardware that Verizon provided to them to see how well 5G works. And she said that even like standing like right next to this antenna, they were not getting 5G connections that were stable. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that this is not an easy problem for Apple to solve, but they have a couple of years to solve it I think, before it starts to get embarrassing. Yeah, I think the the key here is going to be with marketing. So obviously, every company that makes a phone that has five G connection connectivity, they're going to put out all these commercials and all these advertisements that say we've got five G five G, but Apple still doesn't. So Apple just needs to make sure that in their marketing campaign, they point out that five G isn't really useful for for the time being. By the time it because becomes ubiquitous across the world, Apple will probably have a five G five G modem. So it, it's going to be, we're going to see a lot of people saying that their phones are better than Apple's phones because specifically because of the 5G modem. And and then that will all go away and yeah. it won't be, it'll be a moot point. 